make available to you. So whenever a probe fires, there's a bunch of different data you can gather when that probe fires, depending on which probe it is and which provider it is. How do you know what data you can collect? How do you know what those arguments are? RTFM. That's the only way to know. Read the manual. It's, a, it's in the documentation. Look up the documentation for the I.O. provider, and it'll tell you what the arguments are to the I.O. provider probes. Look up the documentation for the sketch provider, it'll tell you what the arguments are. You have to read the documentation. There's other ways to figure it out. I don't want to go down that rat hole right now. You have to read the documentation. But you should do that because those arguments make a lot of really valuable data available to you. And they vary from probe to probe and from provider to provider. That's why I'm not giving you a list of them, you know, in a slide. It's just too much. It's too many. It's one of those things you have to get from the documentation. Okay. The probes made available to you by the profile provider, uh, ARG1 and ARG0, uh, basically give you the, um, the program counter of um, where my code was sitting when the probe fired. So ARG1 is the program counter for the user process, and ARG0 is the program counter for the kernel. So basically what this predicate expression here is saying is when this probe fires, if I was executing user code, give me the process ID and exec name. Or when this probe files, fires, if I was executing user code, give me the exec name and the name of the, of the user function. Um, when this probe fires, same probe, it's all the same probe, if I was executing in the kernel, give me the name of the kernel function. When this probe fires, give me a kernel stack, and on and on. So you can use this time-based profile and these simple, these simple predicates and get interesting, thing, interesting system-wide samples um, that will tell you a lot about what your system is doing. For example, um, Let's say, for example, that you looked at a system or you're looking at a system and SAR or MP stat or VM stat or whatever is telling you that your CPUs are heavily utilized and you're spending a lot of time in percent sys. What's that mean? That means you're in the kernel a lot. You're spending a lot of time in the kernel. That tends to make people uneasy. I know that because I get a lot of emails from people who say, hey Jim, my CPUs are 80% utilized, 60% in the kernel, I'm uneasy. And I always respond with the same answer. How's your application right? <laughs> anyway, don't get me started. All right. So um, in a situation like that, you, you're going to say, OK, if I'm spending a lot of time in the kernel, what's that? Oh, oh da, 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 da. thank you, thank you, thank you. Not everybody is asleep. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Um, I could do something like this. Uh, actually, let me do this. Now, this is actually going to be both exciting and ugly, depending on your experience and level of knowledge of software. Because basically, what I said is, I uh, did is I said, DTrace, tell the system to put a probe on every CPU that's going to fire 997 times a second. <coughs> when that probe fires, if I'm in the kernel, give me a kernel stack and aggregate our kernel stacks. This is going to give you an idea of where the kernel is spending its time. Now, I'm probably not going to see anything all that interesting here, and I'm not, because I don't have a load running on a machine. Now, this is what a stack frame looks like. For those of you that know what a stack frame is, this makes sense to you. For those of you that don't, I apologize. Uh, but it's basically a list of function calls in order from top to bottom. And in this particular case, um, you can see most of the time, while, that, while I was collecting data, um, I was in the idle loop. Um, even if this looks cryptic to you, hopefully you can glean that, that I was basically in the idle loop, because I wasn't doing anything interesting. But this would be a great way for me to, um, this would be a, a, great, a, great, a great way for me to take that next step after I used SAR or MP stat, I saw I had sys time, I want to see where the kernel is spending its time, let me get a time-based kernel profile. And even if I don't know what this stuff is, right, even if I'm not a, a kernel internals expert and I don't know what any of this stuff is, I can still collect the data and then send it back, you know, to the Oracle people that I'm working with to help me understand what my machine is doing. So there's still value in, get, in collecting the data 
to facilitate solving the problem and getting to root cause more efficiently, even if the data isn't anything that you're necessarily comfortable um, interpreting on your own based on your, your background and your knowledge. Okay, uh, back here. So this is some one-liners to look at CPU. Um, I'm probably running out of time, so I want to show you more interesting stuff. I am running out of time. So how do we get back there? Well, okay. So yeah, so here's some examples. Oh, good, I had examples. Um, all right, so here's an example of using the profile provider. In this case, you see I used the full probe specifier name. In the previous examples, I didn't. And I'm saying, you know, 997 times a second. If I'm in user land, give me the PID and exec name. So here you can see I was running an Oracle database, and I had a bunch of processes called Oracle, a bunch of different pins. So I can see that, all right, I got a lot of Oracle processes running. No surprise, I'm running an Oracle database. So now I see, however, when I look at my count aggregation, I see that this one particular PID, pin 2674, was on CPU about twice as much as everybody else. Most of these other Oracle processes came up with counts in the 4000 range. That process came up with a count of 7892. It was there twice as much as everybody else. So maybe I want to take a closer look at that. I can use the Solaris PS command. I'm just looking at that process. What is that process? Oh, it's the Oracle Log Writer. All right, no surprise, Oracle Log Writer is going to be a very busy, pro a very busy process on an Oracle machine. Oh, man. I don't know if we want to do this. <laughs> um, yeah, let me... So basically what... Um, so now basically what this is doing... Okay, so this is just doing a kernel profile. The previous example did a user profile. Um, this is doing a kernel profile. And this illustrates a couple actual interesting features of D-Trace that you should at least be aware of. First note the predicate. I have two conditional statements in that predicate. Up to this point, you've only ever seen me use one. The D language actually supports all of the ANSI C uh, arithmetic, binary, unary, and logical operators. And, and I can actually create complex, complex conditional statements in my predicate. <coughs> what I'm saying there is every time that probe fires, if I'm in the kernel, that's what arg0 is, logical AND, and I won't tell you what that is. I'll simply tell you what it means. It means was the CPU was the CPU not idle? In the interest of time, I'm not going to get into how how that works. Um, it's just looking at the priority of the currently running thread. So what that predicate is saying is, if I'm in the kernel and I'm not in the idle loop, that's basically what it's saying. Am I in the kernel and am I not in the idle loop? I can use. Um, I can use these logical operators in my predicate and create multiple conditions that I want to test for when probes fire as part of my data pruning process. So I didn't show you that before. The other thing here is you see me using the count aggregation again. I'm aggregating on kernel stacks and then I have a second probe and a second set of actions in this D trace. I can have more than one probe. I don't, I'm not limited to one probe at a time in, in when I use D-Trace. I can use, lot, I can specify lots and lots and lots of probes in my D-Trace specification. In this case, I'm specifying two, profile and tick. Now, in this case, I'm telling the tick probe to fire every 10 seconds, and I'm using a function called truncate, and I'm saying I want to truncate the aggregation I collected previously, just give me the top 10, print it out, and exit. So this is a very handy thing you can do with D-Trace. You can use the tick probe in your D-Trace, and you can do interval data, just like you know running SAR at 10 second intervals or NetStat at five second intervals, things like that. With the tick provider in D-Trace, you have the ability to write D-scripts that can either exit after a predefined time or produce data at regular intervals. In this case, I'm saying after 10 seconds, that probe's going to fire. I'm going to truncate the data because I only want the top 10. I'm going to print the data, and I'm going to exit. So it's a, it's a very handy mechanism to use to build D-Trace scripts. Um, 
uh, to build tools. Now here it is at